Hello everybody, thanks for checking out my channel, Mad Films. So what happened to Mad Vic? First of all, if you're new here and you don't know who Mad Vic is or what a Mad Vic is, it's not your average police car, Crown Victoria. It is a 2005, originally white, police interceptor that I purchased about eight years ago in 2012 for about a whopping price of $7,000 at about 50,000 miles on the motor. So a little backdrop on like myself and the actual Crown Victoria game, right? I've been doing this for about 13 years. Now, when I got Mad Vic back in 2012, I still had my number one favored 2000 black Ford police interceptor. And that was my pride and glory up until the day that I sold it. When I sold it around 2015, you know, I took a look at my stock white police interceptor and it was it was pretty depressing. <laughs> I, I definitely had to, to do something to it, you know. And 2016, I got all the funds that I needed saved up for Mad Vic. I went to ADTR Performance, uh, a great guy, great friend of mine down in Southern California. I got all the suspension, the control arms, the sway bars. I got long tube headers. I was looking at getting a pro charger. I got the heads in the cams from Trick Flow, Twisted Wedge. I mean, I did literally everything you could possibly imagine to a Crown Victoria. I was about 109,000 miles before looking at the Trick Flow top end and looking at a pro charger. But I decided to opt out because the motor was getting kind of old and I didn't know the condition of the stock block. It took about, I'd say, like six months to be able to afford everything and the, to, to do some of the stuff myself along with some other friends and then also have to go to shops for some jobs that clearly I'm not a mechanic. I can't do everything by myself. <laughs> so I had to take it to a few shops to get some things done like long tubes, you know, the rear end. Uh, I did the suspension myself. I had then got the car completely transformed into what I called Mad Vic. It was a Crown Vic that was surpassing every single other Panther in my area, in the Bay Area. I mean, I have, to this day, with the exception of Joe Sabella, who is boosted, by the way, have never met a Crown Victoria that could take on Mad Vic. 2018 is when things really took off for the car. Went ahead and created Panther Mafia, became the lead car and leading the West, bringing all these Panthers out and together, bringing them in for ride outs, barbecues, restaurants, late nights, side shows you know doing a little bit of whatever we were having a great time and we've been doing it for a long 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 time mad vic started off back in the day a little whackerish you know spotlights maybe thought about putting a push bumper on there wasn't really into performance kind of just saw what cops looked like before and figured that's just the way it was supposed to be well thank god <laughs> got hit on the head and i got to see things in a different light I was able to turn Mad Vic into the prime example of what it's like to not have a whacker vehicle. Do not be a follower, but be a leader. Be different. Be an individual. Let your car represent who you are with the mods that you decide to put on it. Fast forwarding to about halfway into the year, around June 2018, I got into an unfortunate car accident where a lady just went ahead and absolutely slammed on her brakes to avoid hitting a dumpster truck of which i was right behind her yes i slammed on the gas <laughs> i sent her flying across a couple of lanes i didn't care i was pissed off i just created all this momentum all this hype all this panther mafia and i crashed yeah big bummer i think in 2018 that big car crash is Probably what got Mad Vic from a 300 followed page to probably just over a thousand very, very quickly, very quickly. Um, a lot of people got their heads turned hearing about the car crash, seeing the pictures. Um, it was very sad for a lot of folks. And for me, it just, it really was a blow to my ego because I was, I was getting all these things going. And I mean, what is the showman without the showman's car? Like I gotta have that, you know? Um, I was able to bring that car back within 10 weeks, but you know what? It actually took me only four days to bring it back with the good use of a friend that lives way up in Yuba city, gave me all the parts that I needed and I brought it back in one day. I was had the car ready to go by that following Sunday when I had just crashed on that Tuesday back in June. And then 
I think what most people like did not anticipate happening, most people that start getting a lot of like momentum going on and, and whatever car it is you're in, whether you're in a Corvette, a Mustang, a Charger, a Challenger, if you're making noise, you're getting a following, you're networking, you're productive, you're getting things done every single weekend or all your days off, you're meeting up with people for different pictures, you know, all of this is coming together, then... I'd even find it and say it's accurate to say that most people having attained all of that, when they crash their main project car, they give up. They walk away. They sell out. They buy another car. They're real quiet on social media. Then they decide to come on back under the you know impression of, 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 of a new beginning, a new chapter. And, you know, that's it's not to knock you if, if that's what you did. Like I said, there's a lot of people that have done that. And I think that's really what drove me to say no. Like, I'm not going to do that. Like, I don't treat my guys like you treat your guys. Like, maybe to you it's just a piece of machinery, but to me, to me that's family. And I'm going to do whatever I got to do to make sure that I take care of my vehicles in the most upbeat way. Because let me tell you, I do a whole lot of drifting, a whole lot of donuts. I love having fun. I believe in breaking things just to fix them and upgrade them. And that's exactly why Mad Vic became a success story. I came back, but I didn't come back like I left yesterday. I came back like a completely new vehicle. I put this monster hood on there, switched out my taillights, upgraded my headlights. I started doing more performance and cosmetic mods because, to me, it's not about how you left necessarily, but it's how you come back, especially in this game. And that's what I chose to do with Mad Vic. And that's what got Mad Vic the hype and the attention that it has today. I didn't just stop there. I continued to go with my crew. I took the guys up. Mad Vic kind of became the number one name that was associated with Panther Mafia on Instagram. Started getting onto Facebook. People started hearing about it. Mad Vic is one hell of a name. It's also a vehicle. And it's my vehicle. Once I had gotten into the Lechero stage, where I had the Cobra bumper, I had the custom hood, I mean, I started just really taking things the extra, like, 10 feet. Like, I had to get the, the LED rings around my wheels to match my LED halos that were in my headlights. I got a purple dash. I got my taillights. They change colors. I can keep it one color. I can make my turn signals one color. I can make them sequential. I have all these different options now that were never really ever available in the basic Crown Victoria. Mad Vic started to become like the people's champ. And like, don't get it confused. I'm not talking about myself. Although part of myself is tied into the vehicle's history and story. The car itself won the favor of the people. That's for everybody who doesn't know me, is new to my channel, or has no idea what a Mad Vic is. Now that we're all on board, let's get to why everybody else came to this video. You guys want to know what happened in the first three months of 2020. And let me tell you, it was pretty rough. It was the very end of January. I was just at the LPR beat with one of my buddies. We were driving out of the city. It was late at night. I'm driving in my Mercury Marauder. Boom. What happens? I saw a set of red and blue lights. I took off. Next thing you know, I'm trying to make a U-turn into what I thought was a four-lane wide street. Turns out there's a very nice, hefty 8-inch divider as I went over at 40 miles an hour. The whole front end just cracked the, the subframe. It, it messed up the radiator. <laughs> and if that doesn't make things worse, it's literally six days after I had crashed the Marauder. I'm driving in between jobs. What happens? <laughs> Long story short, I rear-ended somebody. That's what happened. It was probably no more than 10, 15 miles an hour. I was trying to make a right-hand turn and get into a fast-flowing lane. Guys right in front of me decided to come to a complete stop, and that's what happened. I had no choice. It wasn't too bad, but there was quite a rush, and there was a reason why this couldn't have been at a worse time for me. Viewers are like, well, I could imagine owning two cars and then crashing them within a week of each other, both of them, and now you're trying to figure out how to go to work. Yeah, that sucks, but why would it be such a bad timing? Well, let me tell you why it was such a bad timing. My buddy Josh... I have a big Vic from down south who might be going now by Clutch Media by the time this video comes out. <laughs> he was coming on up to the Bay Area. Clutch Media, my friend Josh, is 
someone who got me into photography with these vehicles, okay? Uh, three years ago, by the time uh, I had decided to create Panther Mafia, I had ventured down south to meet everyone that I thought was an influential person to the community. Josh was one of them. Kind of hit it off real good with Josh. You know, we kind of became friends right, you know, from the get-go. We continued to have a friendship over the years. Before he decides to sell his car, he says he's going to come on up to the Bay Area for a photo shoot with me. And so here I am, super duper excited. He's coming up on February 28th. It's February 7th. I just crashed Mad Vic and I crashed my other car. They're both at shops. I don't know how to tell my friend that. I know you're coming up to me this time, bud, but I like I might be just stuck taking Ubers around the Bay, okay? If some of you guys know me personally or you follow me pretty good on the gram and you got a good idea of, of, of who I am and what my life's like, you would know that I work six days a week, 16 hours a day. I put in a lot of work at the security company, okay? Let me tell you, these two bad-looking vehicles here, <laughs> they don't pay for themselves, okay? So that being said, I have close to no time on my hands. It is February 7th. I'm one week away from my birthday. And then about two weeks away from the actual photo shoot day that Josh is coming up to the Bay Area. I mean, the stress levels are through the roof at this point. I'm freaking out. I'm making phone calls. I'm talking to all sorts of different people. I'm relying on a lot of old connections. I'm trying to get things done and pass through. I'm trying to have one vehicle pass to the other. They're both in different shops. Long story short, with the help of my friend Gary Martinez, with the help of my friend White Boy, we went ahead and we got everything wrapped up on the morning of the 28th. I mean, this doesn't get any more last minute. I literally, like, the night before Josh came is when I saw the picture of my car, Mad Vic, finally back wrapped. There's there's no more bumper abrasions as you saw. I mean, the accident was pretty minimal, so it wasn't that bad. So it's the morning of the 28th, and Gabby and I were... We're out, we're headed out, picked up my friend Justin, Justin's driving Mad Vic, I'm driving Mad Merc, we're on our way to go meet I Have a Big Vic, aka Clutch Media, my friend Josh, staying in Alameda, California. We had a hell of a day that day, we went all over the bay from Oakland to San Francisco to Marin, we were shooting, we got drone action, we got bridge action, we got donut action, we had a lot of good food, I mean, you know, it's just a typical weekend in the bay with Mad Films, what more would you expect, you know what I'm saying? So, all that done, and all that being behind us, it's like the relief was, was, was finally here. There was no more stress. There was nothing to worry about. We, 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 we made all the deadlines happen. We beat all the odds. I mean, I, like, I still can't believe that with three weeks of time, I crashed two vehicles and brought them both back. It cost me a pretty penny, but hey, that's what you're working so hard for, right? So, it was March 7th. Here in Richmond, California. I got up early in the morning. It was around 7.30 in the morning. I got up my Mercury Marauder and, well, I went to a few areas that I that I know to be my stomping grounds when it comes to doing some fuckery without getting interrupted by the law. I have a few places designated to go do donuts around the area. And I took my Marauder out there and I was having a good grand old time, as usual. So I drove back. I woke up my girlfriend, we got into Mad Vic, and what did we do? Went back down to go do some more donuts, and then maybe go grab some breakfast after. That's the thing we do up here in, in Northern California. Well, that actually didn't happen as planned. We were driving down, heavy, heavy rain. I mean, you could just see the rain. You could see, like, starting to flood up on the street. Hydroplane, there was nothing I could do. I hit the brakes, I was coming up to a light, I was probably about a quarter mile out, driving in, driving in, driving in, about the normal time that you would hit your brakes, nothing, started sliding, car started fishtailing to the right, and then to the left, I'm turning the wheel, I'm giving it gas, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it, but it, it's, it's becoming apparent that it's, it's just not too much of my control, as I'm nearing the rear end of a few vehicles that are lined up at the light. I had a flash second to make a decision, knowing that we had just crashed the front end less than three weeks prior to save the front end. 
So I gave it gas, I turned the wheel, and then I countersteered it, and I gave it even more gas, forcing me into a, a sideways slide going right into the back of another parked vehicle. That car crash is unfortunately what totaled Mad Vic. The center beam that is in between both driver's side doors is pushed all the way in, halfway past the driver's seat. The seats are crunched, the quarter panel took damage, even the roof got crumpled up a little bit. Very sad day. If you guys caught that date, you can tell that it was March 7th and this video was uploaded in the beginning of April. Um, I took this loss very, very hard. It was very difficult for me to continue talking to people. I kept this a secret because, you know, after attaining such a platform, it, it, it's more than just a strike to your ego. It becomes something embarrassing and something that's shameful that an experience that you don't want to continue to revisit with millions of people simply asking the same question over and over again. Like, what happened? Oh my God, I can't believe it. Is it is it salvageable? Can you bring it back? Is it done forever? I can't take any more of this right now. Oh my God, like, yo, like, that affects me too. Like, yeah, I answer to the name Mad Vic, but, like, don't get it twisted. Like, I'm a fan of the car too. I didn't build it for you guys. Never. Not once. I built it for me. And we just happen to like the same stuff, so we both love it. But this this was the hardest loss separation and even decision that I had to make. Because I had already crashed, came back, just recently crashed, and made it back on time, wrapped up and ready for a photo shoot, thanks to White Boy. But this time... Although I had no deadlines to meet, I didn't have to be ready for anything, I simply can't afford to spend $7,000 on bringing that car back body work wise only to know that if it ever, ever sustained another hit in the same area, it would be like a glass window. I know that if that car crash, if I had landed about 8 inches closer to the driver's side, to the door, there's a possibility I might not be able to walk today. You know... I had to make a decision. It wasn't easy. Madvik is totaled, is done as a shell. So what's next? Might be one of the first questions on your mind. Well, I've come way too far in this game to bow out now. Madvik is not dead. You have to ask yourself what it is that makes a car so special to you can't be the door handles okay can't be the tail lights nope definitely not a color right because colors come on i got 50 friends right now if they wanted to they could all copy the same color colors are attainable my friend that's not what makes a car what is it that makes a car what makes it special to you is it just the look the rims because again that can easily be recreated. No, 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 no. I'm talking something bigger. It's the motor. The motor and the trans is what sets your car apart from others. Although the same year make and model could have even came out of the same state or factory. I don't care. I guarantee you they don't drive the same. Guaranteed. They don't. I've driven a lot of Panthers. I mean, I truly believe in that. Like, no car is the same. Like, just because your sisters, does that... Okay, well, man, let me not go there. But you know where I'm getting at, <laughs> okay? Everybody's an individual, and I believe that cars are individuals, too. I am going to be saying goodbye to the color, saying goodbye to the shell, you know, quarter panel. Doors, roof, keeping the hood, keeping the bumper. I'm taking everything out of Mad Vic, and it is going into my next Vic. So stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram at Mad Vic. That's M A D underscore V I C. Shoot me a follow. Keep up with what I'm doing. I guarantee you that within two weeks of you watching this video, you're going to see an amazing video of what? Stay tuned to find out.